Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode 21 of the series of tutorial on how to build a WordPress plugin from scratch. In this tutorial we're gonna take a look on how to optimize a little bit our code to make it easier to manage on the long run. So if we access our admin.php page, where in the previous lesson we defined all these amazing custom settings and custom fields, you will notice that there's a lot of repetition here and uh, we are repeating these multi-dimensional array just to basically repeat the same option group and the same callback. The only thing that changes is the option name and the same thing happens here in the declaration of our custom fields where the only thing that changes is the actual ID and the title of that custom field. So why don't we spend some time in optimize this super massive array and we just use the built-in methods of PHP like the for each to avoid to rewriting useless code. So first of all we need to access our base and base controller where we are defining all our publicly accessible variables throughout all the classes in our plugin like in this case in the admin.php here we're extending the base controller so whatever we write in the base controller is going to be accessible by the admin that's perfect. So in the base controller let's define a new variable a publicly accessible variable called managers and I'm calling it managers just because I declare all these custom fields as the uh, custom post type manager, taxonomy manager and blah blah blah. So you can call it however, however you want, it's just like a custom variable. And let's specify a default initialization of this variable that is just an array. This variable needs to be an array, it cannot be a string, an integer and blah blah blah, it can be just an array. So that's perfect. Here in the construct of our base controller, let's populate these managers array with all our custom IDs for our custom fields that we generated. So let's open these managers variable and inside here, let's open an array and let's go on another line to keep it slightly more organized and just write cpt underscore manager and all uh, the other unique IDs that we generated in our custom fields. And of course, because we are referring to a variable that we declared inside the class, we need to use the uh, this because we're referring to the class and then the variable inside this class. Perfect. If we save it and we go back in our administration area, we refresh, nothing changes because we didn't do anything. But every time you write a PHP code, just even if it takes you half a second, just refresh the page just in case you forgot something, you have, I don't know, a typing issue and stuff like that, just check your page. Now that we have this full list of managers, we can use a built-in method of PHP to for each loop all those managers and uh, automatically populate these arguments array, multi-dimensional array with all the things that we need. So first let's comment these entire stuff out that's perfect. Then here, let's again declare the arguments array that it's going to be equal to an empty array. And then let's create a simple for each loop to loop for each these managers as a single manager. So every time we loop inside one manager, we're going to have these uh, temporarily declared variable called manager that is basically going to contain just the custom post type manager taxonomy, all these custom IDs. So for each managers, every time we have a manager variable, let's call the arguments, but let's inject a new array. So by specifying inside an array, by specifying uh, the empty square brackets, you're saying that inject whatever thing we're going to write here after the equal inside a new slot of that array. If we don't specify the square brackets, we're going to override the array. So we're not going to add one custom field after another, but we're going to constantly override whatever data we have in that variable. If we specify the square brackets, we're going to add to that array. So here, what we have to do, we have to simply copy this array and of course remove the comment because we don't want to inject a commented array and then a semicolon at the end and inside this array the only thing that we have to change instead of manually calling the ID, let's just print the manager. That's it. 
We did it. Yeah, that was really fast and really easy. Let's delete completely all this stuff. And now instead of this super long list of arrays, one array after another, we have just one that automatically loops throughout all our managers. If we save it, we go back in our administration area, we refresh, nothing happened. Uh, we basically, like, it looks like we didn't change anything, but if we save our settings, uh, everything remains safe. So if I deactivate a bunch of things, these remain deactivated, even if I change the page and if we reactivate randomly, this thing saved. Perfect. So nothing changed. The only thing that changed our code is 10 times less convoluted and easier to manage because we're using modular type of callbacks and we're using a modular approach. So this is way easier. From a developer that hates plugins, here's a plugin that doesn't suck. Elementor is a live page builder for WordPress. It's amazing. It's open source, faster than the competition, easy to use. It doesn't require any coding for anyone to just build a beautiful page. I think I'm going to say it. Yes, I'm going to say it. It's the best page builder for WordPress. I said it. It's totally free for you to use it, download it and install it on all the websites that you want. And if you really, really like it, you should consider buying the pro version that it's not expensive at all. And it comes with a tons of new features. Click the link in the description below the video to learn more. We can do exactly the same thing for our custom fields. Custom fields though, they have a slightly different options because they have the title that changes for every array. So instead of a regular array, we can extend this to be an associative array. So basically what we have to do, let's copy every single title here and let's declare like we're doing here as an associative array, the custom post type manager has a description of active custom post type manager and so on. So let's do it for every single ID. Awesome. Now, because we updated our array with an associative array, so now we have an ID and a value or a key and a value is not just a simple value. If we go back in our admin.php, we cannot anymore leave the first array in this way because inside the manager, if we do a var dump of inside the manager here and we check manager, and we check whatever gets printed here, we refresh, you will notice that here it's actually getting printed the title, not the key. And in our list of arrays here, we want the key, not the title, because the key is the ID. The title is just a string. We don't want to use the title as the unique ID that we're going to store into our database. We still want the same ID that it's used in our form. So let's change that by instead of having a simple for each that converts the managers into a single manager, let's change it from for each these managers as key that contains the value and you can name these two variables however you want. The key value is the basic regular convention of an associative array. So the first one is the key and then the second one is the value that it depends on the key. You can name these however you want. You can name these ID and title if that makes sense for you. But using key value is more like globally recognized. So it's always better to leave it like that because it's more accessible to other users. So if we just print the key here and we refresh our administration area. Of course, we're going to have an error because we're trying to tap the variable manager here. It doesn't exist anymore. So it's just like put the key to remove the error. And you can see that here we're printing the IDs. We're not printing anymore the titles. That's perfect. Now that we have this associative array, let's do exactly the same for our list of fields. So let's copy these for each because we're super lazy, we don't want to repeat it. And inside the declaration of set fields, let's just simply copy all these declared array. Let's put it in here. Awesome. Let's comment this out, the entire arguments array that we don't use anymore because we're doing all the awesome uh, modular stuff. So for each managers, we have a key and a value. Inside the ID, we need to change it with the key. So let's select them all and let's paste key. And then for the title, we just need to declare the value. There you go. Let's save it. Let's go back in our admin area. Let's refresh. And that's it. 
again nothing changed but if we refresh here if we inspect the element here and we access it we still have the same thing we have the id with the name and the custom post type manager and the proper title and if we save this stuff of course the save in works and if we deactivate saves deactivate it change page everything it works as it's supposed to be we didn't change anything in the way we are printing our stuff or in the way the user is watching, is looking, is accessing the data that we're printing on the page. The only thing that we changed, we optimized a lot our PHP script. We removed how many hundreds of lines, like a lot. So we just have one single for each and another single for each to manage everything. And all our declarations here, it's inside the base controller. And this is also cool because in the future, we're gonna activate and deactivate classes based on the user selection. If these IDs are checked in our database, that means we can activate that specific section and having this array globally accessible uh, throughout our entire plugin, thanks to the base controller is gonna be really, really handy and really, really useful. And this was a super quick and short one optimization of our PHP code. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at some database stuff. So it's going to be kind of complicated, but we need to understand how uh, WordPress stores in the database all the data and how we can optimize it in different ways to not just bloat our database with a massive and uh, really not well organized plugin. So it's pretty much it for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel, and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.